So now it's time to validate the registration form because at the moment we're not validating anything. We're not validating whether an email already exists. We're not validating a username. We're not checking that the two passwords match. Uh, in the next part of this series, we're going to be actually doing the unique email and username validation. But for now, we're just going to be inputting some very basic validation and then sending the user back to the view here with any error messages displayed here. And this is extremely easy to do. But what we do need to do is under our code course directory, create a validation class, which we uh, basically can use to extend Violin's functionality. If you want to go over to the GitHub page for Violin and just read about how all of this works, that would be a really good thing to do. But we have this extending Violin section, so we can extend the Violin class to add custom rules, messages, and field messages. Uh, and this allows us to just keep everything in one place so we can uh, add as much custom functionality as we need. So head over there and read that if you want to, but otherwise we're gonna be dealing with this just here. So the first step to validating is I'm going to create a new folder called validation under code course, and I'm going to create a new file called validator.php. So let me just pull that down and we're going to save this out. So this file then is going to be our own custom class, but it's going to extend violin, which will give us all of the uh, functionality we need to be able to validate. So let's namespace this first of all. So remember the outer folders code course, it will be different for you. And it's under validation and the class is called validator. So before we do anything here, let's add this to our slim container. So here we're going to say app container singleton validation. And we have our closure there, we're going to use app so we can use that in here. And here we're going to return a new validator. Now, of course, this class doesn't exist at the moment. Um, well, it exists, but it's not going to do anything. Uh, but we also have a namespace, remember, for this validator. It's code course validation validator. That's the name of the class. So up here, let's use code course validation validator. So what we can now do is uh, actually use that validation object on within our container to start to validate under here. But inside of validator, we need to actually extend file in. So we have all the validation functionality. So let's extend file in and up here, let's use file in file in and we can now start to validate. We're not going to be adding anything into this just yet. That will be in the next part when we add custom validation rules to check if a user, um, if an email or a username has already been taken in the database. So we can close this off for now. So inside of our register route, then we're now ready to go and actually validate. So what point do we need to validate here? Well, we don't, we want to validate before we create a user account. So, Let's start the validation up here. When we have our data, we can pass our data into the validator. And then if it passes, we can create a user account. Otherwise, we will show the errors on the form. So what I'm going to do here then is create a variable called V, and that's going to be app validation. And here what I can do is I can say V validate. We have an array here with the key names. So this will be things like email, everything like that. Each of these are an array. The first parameter is the actual item you're validating. So we're validating the email. And the second is a string of rules. So in this case, we're going to have, we want it to be required and we want it to be an email. So these are separated by a pipe. You can read all about uh, the different validation rules in the violin documentation on GitHub. So the next thing we want to validate is the username. So let's just switch this out for username. Let's pass in the username. And for the username, we want this to be required. We want it to be an alpha numeric uh, and allow dashes. So this will just mean that it can contain uh, characters, numbers and dashes and underscores. So hyphens and underscores. We want it to be a maximum of 20. So remember in our database, uh, we had the username of a length of 20 and we, well, that's pretty much it. We'll eventually be validating whether it's a unique username. 
So the next one then is the password. So we want to give in the password that the user submitted. We obviously want the password to be required. And for now, let's just say this is a minimum of six characters. So the password confirm is the password confirm there. And this is required. And we don't have to include min six because uh, this is min six and these two need to match. So we can just say that we want this to match password. All this rule does is it will check that this value matches the password here that we pass in. So otherwise it will give us an error. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's just uh, create a quick if statement. And to check if this is passed, we just say if V passes. If it passes, let's die and say passed. And otherwise, let's say die failed, just so we can test this out. So when I register now, we get failed because obviously all of these um, are blank or empty. If I fill these in like rubbish, it's still going to fail because we know that we have errors here. So how do we actually get the errors out of our validator? Well, we can use the errors method. So we just say var dump v errors, and that will give us a list of the errors. So let's hit register. Ah, so, okay, what we'll need to do is just kill the page there. That didn't actually, um, and we'll just remove that record from our database. Let's remove both of them, actually. Okay, so um, if this doesn't pass, we're going to output the errors. So let's do this again. And there we go. So we've got a violent support message bag. All the message bag is, is just a way to pull out all of the errors. And you can roughly see here, email is required, username is required, password is required, password confirm is required. And then, for example, if we were to type in a rubbish email, we see email must be a valid email address. So we're getting the errors back, but we need to actually do something useful with them. And that thing is to output them to the page so the user can see. So if the uh, validation does pass, we want to take all of this code here and it goes in here. So if the validation passes, we register the user, we flash uh, a message to say that the user has been registered and then we redirect home. Otherwise down here, we want to, to render the register view passing the errors into that view and also passing the request object into that view so we can output the previous stuff they've typed so they don't lose any of their form. So all we do down here is say app render auth register.php and to pass variables to a uh, twig view within slim we just have this array at the end here as the second argument. So we want to pass the errors into that view. And we also want to pass, pass the request object. So request, and remember that's here. So let's see what happens when we hit register. We just see the same form. That's because we've been passed through to that view with the errors, which we'll output in just a moment. And if we enter everything correctly, uh, let's say tabby at code course.com. So everything here is correct. We hit register and we see a registered account in here. So let's look at now how we output these errors that we're passing through to our view here. So the first step here then is just to check if an error exists for a particular field. And to do this, we say if errors, so errors is that variable we pass through. We don't mark them with a dollar sign because uh, Twig allows us to bypass that. We're going to say if errors first email, all that does is get the first error from that message bag. So if that if, if it does have an error, and we'll just end the if there, then in here we want to output the error. So we're going to say errors.first email. So let's check out and see what that's done. Let's register and hit register. There we go. We get email is required. Perfect. So easy validation, so simple to do. So what we can do now is copy this and paste it for the username and just change username here and username there. And we can do the same for the password. So password, password, and we'll do the same for the password confirmation as well. So that's password confirm. 
password confirm. There we go. Okay, so now when I hit register, we see all of the errors there. If I type in a rubbish uh, email and I type in a pass two passwords that maybe don't match, you can see here we've got email must be a valid email address, password must be a minimum of six, password confirm must match password. So our validation is now complete. We're validating. If a user passes the validation, uh, we create a record in the database table. If we don't, we're sent back to the old form and we're given out our uh, errors. But what happens if I enter, say, a valid email and then I forget to fill out the rest of the fields and hit register? Well, the email goes even though it was valid. And that's a shame because it's going to take your users a long time to output that information. So we can update this view to check if we have a posted email. And then if we do, we can output this within the uh, within the input. So to do this, we have an if statement nested within here. And we're going to check if request, remember request is the variable we sent through to the view, post email. And we'll just end that if there. So if that's the case, remember we're within the input element. So all we need to do is output value. And then in here, we can say request dot post email. So let's check this out. I'm going to enter a valid email. Forget to fill out the rest, hit register, and that stays there. Perfect. So we can do this for the rest of the um, fields. So let's just copy this if statement here. And let's paste it into the end of just in here. And we'll change this to username. And we'll change this to username. We'll do the same. Oh, actually, no, we'll leave the password out because it's uh, best practice not to output a password if it if it's failed for any reason. So let's enter a username or an email, sorry, and a username, and hit register. So password is required. We can type them in and we just allow the user to not have to fill these out again. So um, our validation is complete, but what we can do is we can register a user twice with the same email and same username, which is obviously a problem. When they go to log in, uh, it's just going to be all muddled up because we're going to have users with duplicate usernames and duplicate emails, and we don't want that. So in the next part, what we're going to be doing is focusing on checking the unique email and username within our validator that we've already created. So our validation class just here. We'll add our own custom rules in here, which will allow us to uh, connect to our database and check this and integrate that uh, as part of the process we did uh, when we validated just here. So it's just as easy as validating like this.